Thank you so much, Holly. I love, I love listening to that, that tone just get softer and softer and softer. Well, welcome everyone. Welcome to the love and light that is Unity of Lawrence. We're so happy to have you here today, whether IRL or virtually. Hello to our people on Zoom and Facebook. Thank you for joining us as well. In Unity, we begin everything in prayer. Let's take a centering breath now and open to the divine in all of us and listen to this prayer. With full hearts and open minds, we gather today to accept the endless possibilities of peace on earth and peace in our hearts. We acknowledge the existence of pain and injustice in the world, but we also acknowledge limitless love and our limitless being. We welcome our divine inheritance as co-creators. We know that we are already standing in the light of love, of healing, and of transformation. And so it is. Amen. Our prayer chaplains are trained to hold sacred space and pray with you one-on-one. -on -one. If there is anything in your heart to be held in prayer, uh, we invite you to see a chaplain after today's service. And we have the lovely Betty Wilson serving as our chaplain today. Thank you so much, Betty. Um, and also, our chaplains will pray with you during the week. Uh, you can fill out one of those lavender prayer request slips uh, right at your seats, drop it in the wooden box outside of the office. Uh, remember that all prayers are confidential, unless you would like uh, them to be shared. And now it's time to join Holly in singing, We Are Walking as the Light. We'll sing this together. Here we go. You are walking as the light, as the light, as the light. I am walking as the light, as the light of God. As the light, as the light, as the light. Let's do it one time. I am mocking as a light, as a light, as a light. I am mocking as a light, as the light of God. As the light, 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 as the light of God. And let's walk as the light and meet our neighbors. Say hello this morning.
Give me my mic. Thank you. I need my hot mic. <laughs> do you don't want me to project with my teacher voice? I will do it. <laughs> and now it's time for your unity intentions. Please affirm with me together unity's founding principle. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life. God, the source of all good. And now our Unity of Lawrence vision statement. United in divine love and joy, we celebrate a peaceful and abundant world for all. And finally, our Unity of Lawrence mission statement. We are a thriving spiritual community, sharing love, building bridges, and inspiring transformation. All right, this woman really needs no introduction, but I will read it now. Just by way of reminder, the, the queen, that's right, that's right. By way of reminder, Kelly Hunt is a singer, a songwriter, a recording artist, a speaker, and a workshop facilitator based here in Lawrence, Kansas. She is currently at work on her eighth album and an additional album featuring songs she's written and performed for the New Thought Churches throughout the United States, both expected to be released in 2025. Kelly, you're, you're just teasing us. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Lovely to be home. Really great to see all of you here today. I, my heart is very full. And... Um, have a song about uh, my vision for our world. I can see the future coming with its bright lights on. I don't know how I see it, but I do. It's just around the bend. righteous, it is ready, it is true. And on their knees in Ferguson, the tear gas burns their eyes, while memories of Birmingham ring true. As children cross the border, clutching nothing, but goodbyes It's as if we can't remember They're the same as me and you But I can see the future come With its bright lights on I don't know how I see around the bend from where we have always been. It is righteous, it is ready, it is true. The future isn't found, just casting blame and shouting names. We must keep on moving forward, things cannot
it's just around the bend from where I've always been. It is righteous. in today, <laughs> I realized how much a place can transform, uh, just a physical building can transform by the light that enters it. And I'm talking about both the physical light, one of the things I love about just this building is all the natural light in here. But I'm also talking about the light that is walked in the door and that fills this room right now. And I also sense that those that are viewing this online or are viewing it after the fact are also aglow with that light as well. Can you feel it? Can you feel that? I want to tell you a story. This is a, a beautiful story that was written by the author Elizabeth Gilbert. And many of us know Elizabeth Gilbert from Eat, Pray, Love, her book Big Magic, and many other books. <clears throat> and what a bright light in the world she is for so many people, just by being herself and allowing what is hers to do to come out into this world. She has allowed that. What a gift for us. And she writes, some years ago, I was stuck on a crosstown bus in New York City during rush hour. Traffic was barely moving. The bus was filled with cold, tired people who were deeply irritated with one another and with the world itself. Two men barked at each other about a shove that might or might not have been intentional. A pregnant woman got on, and nobody offered her a seat. Rage was in the air. No mercy would be found here. But as the bus approached 7th Avenue, the driver got on the intercom. Folks, he said, I know you've had a rough day, and you are frustrated, and I can't do anything about the weather or traffic. But here is what I can do. At each, as each one of you gets off the bus, I will reach out my hand to you. As you walk by, drop your troubles into the palm of my hand, okay? Don't take your problems home to your families tonight. Just leave them with me. My route goes right by the Hudson River. <laughs> and when I drive by there later, I will open the window and throw your troubles into the water. It was as if a spell had lifted, and everybody burst out laughing. Faces gleamed with surprised delight. People who had been pretending for the past hour not to notice each other's existence were suddenly grinning, grinning at each other like, is this guy serious? Oh, he was serious. At the next stop, just as he promised, the driver reached out his hand, palm up, and waited. One by one, all the exiting commuters placed their hand just above his and mimed the gesture of dropping something into his palm. Some people laughed as they did this. Some teared up. But everyone did it. The driver repeated the same lovely ritual at the next stop, too, and the next, all the way to the river. 
We live in a hard world, my friends. And sometimes it is extra difficult to be a human being. Sometimes you have a bad day. Sometimes you have a bad day that lasts for several years. You struggle and fail. You lose jobs, money, friends, faith, and love. You witness horrible events unfolding in the news. And you become fearful and withdrawn. There are times when everything seems cloaked in darkness. You long for the light, but don't know where to find it. But what if you are the light? That's what this bus driver taught me, that anyone can be the light at any moment. This guy wasn't some big power player. He wasn't a spiritual leader. He wasn't some media-savvy influencer. He was a bus driver, one of society's most invisible workers. But he possessed real power, and he used it beautifully for our benefit. When life feels especially grim, or when I feel particularly powerless in the face of the world's troubles, I think of this man. And I ask myself, what can I do right now to be the light? Of course, I can't personally end all wars or transform vexing people into entirely different creatures. I definitely can't control traffic. But I do have some influence on everyone I brush up against, even if we never speak or learn each other's name. No matter who you are, or where you are, or how mundane or tough your situation may seem, I believe you can illuminate your world. In fact, I believe this is the only way the world will ever be illuminated. One bright act of grace at a time all the way to the river. I so resonated with that story when I read it. And one of the things I most love about it is this. This was an everyday, real-life occurrence. This actually happened in somebody's life. And can you just see this driver who has been surrounded with this energy all day long? And not only did he not buy into it and take it on himself and become gruff and irritated and cranky, what he did was choose. What he did was choose. Bright lights are everywhere, and you're one of them. You can choose to be and embrace it and act on that or not. It's up to you. Nobody can come up to you and say, hey, turn up the light, pal. Getting a little dark over here. No. You get to do that. The other thing that resonates with me is it can be difficult to see the light in others or around us when we don't identify that same light within ourselves. It can be difficult. Have you ever been around somebody who when they walk in the room, you know, the saying goes, they just light up the room. And you think, gosh, I wish I could do that. Well, in reality, you have the same access to that same power and light. And today I'm going to be substituting the word the divine or creator or God with the word light a lot. So when I'm saying that, that's what it means to me. We all have different verbiage. We all have different ways of expressing what that divine energy is in our life. It's different for all of us. Some people, it comes through as the care they take of others. Some, it comes through on the canvas as they paint or draw. Some people's light shines brightly when they're making food and cooking and baking for others, and they just infuse that loaf of homemade bread with that lovely energy and 
when you eat food like that, that has been, pre been prepared, not in a hurry, not gruff, not because they have to, because they don't want to do it, but somebody says, ah, this is going to be good for the spirit. This is going to be for the body. This is good for the soul. We may not have words for it at the time. We may not be able to identify it, but that loaf of bread is glowing with that bright light of intention. We're almost to Halloween, and this year is a, a fun year for me because our granddaughter just turned three last week. Aww. And she's a little more conscious of what's happening, going on with Halloween. And kind of excited about participating in an appropriate way for a three-year-old. Now, she couldn't decide if she wanted to be a dinosaur or she wants to be a monkey. So she has a dinosaur costume and a monkey costume. <laughs> and she's the kind of gal that when she plays with Play-Doh, you know, have you the different colors, she likes to mix them all together immediately. <laughs> when you give her a choice of, here's a, a pair of socks. Do you want the blue, the green, the, the gray, the orange, the pink? She wants one of one color and one of the other. So I love that reminder. We can choose. It doesn't have to be the same old way. It doesn't have to be what's expected. So she is just naturally shining her, her very bright light by the actions that she takes. And when we think of Halloween costumes, think back to when you were little. If you celebrated Halloween, what was your favorite costume? Just think to yourself, man, I really felt good when I was that, you know, turtle or whatever it was. One year, my brother, who is only about two and a half years older than I am, we went trick-or-treating together, you know, a lot. He wanted to be a mummy, and that's all there was to it, and he was going to be a mummy. I, unbelievably, wanted to be a witch. Imagine. And so um, he got my, he, my mom, who was very creative, still is, to come up with how he's going to be a mummy. And she had all this muslin done up in strips, and she had him all wrapped up from his head to his toe with, you know, place to breathe and little mouth and eyes. And I, we took a picture, which I still have, of us standing by the front steps of our house going, I'm a witch, I'm a mummy, dig me. There was one thing that was forgotten was how, well, if he had to go to the bathroom, what was he going to do? <laughs> So, we trick-or-treated speed of light. <laughs> trick-or-treat, 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 trick-or-treat. Okay, got a candy, put it out. Oh, boom. So, it's fun to disguise ourselves. It's fun to be somebody else. You might want to plan ahead how you're going to navigate your real life in, the, in between. You got a light in there, you want to shine it, but there are some things we need to take care of. Okay. I was looking at different uh, children's costumes online, and some of the best ones I saw were costumes that this child wanted so much to be. Have you seen, uh, there are several really cool costumes for kids that are in wheelchairs, race cars, airplanes, you know, all kinds of, it's amazing, different animals scary dinosaurs with a child who may not necessarily feel so powerful in the physicality of their body. And it helped them embrace that light that they still have in them anyway. It's not about the wheelchair. It's not about the age. It's not about what we look like on the outside. None of this is. That divine light is living there brightly. But at Halloween, they get to choose to be a superhero I believe we all have the ability to be our own superhero. I love the lightning bug costume that has the on and off switch on the tail. It's like, I'm on, I'm off. The darker it gets, the more the light's on. So when we release the idea of the outer is who we are as opposed to the inner, it's fun to play with that. And Halloween is a great time to do that. It's fun to play around with that. And in everyday life, it's fun to remember, or at least I think it's fun to remember, that we have access to that right now, right here, everybody on the planet. Unity principle, the second unity principle is people are good. 
Since humans are made in the image of God or light, they have a spark of divinity within them and therefore they are inherently good also. If we espouse this principle, what might the future hold for our world? If we espouse this principle, people are good. It's not easy to do because obviously we're human too. 100% human, 100% full of light and divine. People are good. What would our future look like if we lived that principle? Always remember, said uh, Dean Acheson, who was the, third, the 51st Secretary of State for President Harry Truman from 1949 to 53. He said, always remember that the future comes one day at a time. One day. What can I do this day? to embrace and recognize my own light and to see it and sense it in others, even when they don't sense it in themselves. I love the idea of someone holding the high watch over an event or holding the high watch over a family or a person. And I didn't really used to understand what that meant. And that's evolved in, in my mind what that means over the years. Part of what I think that means is they are standing sentinel in the light, embracing the light, for sometimes for those who can't do it themselves until they can. They bring that mindfully to that room or to that event. Who are the bright lights in your lives? If we think for a moment... Is there somebody in your early life or right now or that you see out in the world, and you don't even need to know them personally, but who, who embodies that energy of bright light just by being who they are, and it's very easy to discern to yourself and to others. When you say somebody's name, you go, oh, that's a bright light right there. When I say the name Betty Wilson, what do you think? Ah, oh, there's that bright light right there. It's the red cake. That's right. We got we got to have some. So, Betty, I'm sorry. I My sunglasses are over there, but if I had them, I'll put them on right now because you're right in the front row. So wouldn't it be lovely to be thought of in that way. And everybody brings a different presence to that. We all do. We're all here for different reasons. And only we know what those things are. But wouldn't it be lovely? Think to yourself, okay, when so-and-so thinks of me, they go, oh, there's that bright light. How would that feel? I have a feeling that it would, it would feel uplifting. And as a matter of fact, you would feel even brighter. When, you, when I've had teachers in the past, when I was, I remember my first grade teacher very well. And do you know what her name was? This is the truth, Mrs. Mummy. <laughs> it's true. And she was a delightful, wonderful person. And she, what we found out later, in just in secret would tell each child, you know, I saw what you did today. I am so proud of you. Oh, boy. She wouldn't single anybody out or make anybody feel less than or strive to, to have that. She, in private, she would say to us, come in from recess. She'd have her arm around one child. And she goes, you know, I am so proud of you. I remember the day she told me that. I had been swinging on the swings. And back then, you know, 150 years ago, when I was in first grade, <laughs> they had the swings with the, with the metal chains and that kind of rubbery seat, and we would have contests. Who can swing the highest? And you go higher and higher, and then you would jump out and think, whoa, what fun is that? And it was time she would call us in for recess. Well, what I didn't know was the little, I had a little dress on, and it, was, it got hooked on one of the pieces of metal. I didn't know it. So I'm going higher and higher. It's time to come in and I fly out of it and it rips my dress right off. Oh, no. Ta-da! <laughs> and boy was I surprised. 
And being in first grade, I mean, the kids, instead of making fun, they're like, oh, 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 oh. And at first I was very worried, and she came, she swooped right up to me and put her little jacket around and walked me in. She goes, don't worry about that dress. We'll get it later. Cover me up. Walked me straight to the nurse's office, put me in there, called my mom and said, well, you know, I think Kelly needs a new dress. <laughs> and mom said, well, what happened to her dress? She goes, well, it's hanging on this, the swing out in the play on the playground. But instead of making me feel like I just wanted to cry and be upset and, oh, my dress and, oh, my God, oh, I have a little undershirt and, you know, ah. She said, don't worry, boom, let's put you in here. Bingo, new dress, and didn't talk about it in class again. Everybody forgot about it, except for me, because there's my dress hanging out there out the window. <laughs> so, but Mrs. Mummy was so loving to all of her students. When I got ready to graduate high school, I sent her an invitation to my graduation, and guess what? She came. And I know she had hundreds and hundreds of students, and I just want to send a big shout out of appreciation for all the teachers in our world. Thank you. Thank you. So our thoughts create the experiences. Human beings create their experiences by the activity of their thinking. Everything in the manifest realm has a beginning in thoughts. We thought about it. We can show up as light, as God, the divine. It's our choice. That's a beautiful thing about being human. Rumi says, we are stars wrapped in skin. The light you are seeking has always been within. We are stars wrapped in skin. Now I can visualize uh, a new Halloween costume for myself. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking about a star. I don't know. It's easier to recognize the light in others when we recognize it in ourselves. And I love the saying... Uh, and, and sometimes these, these phrases, these words, these sayings kind of become rote and, and uh, lose a little bit of their spark until we go back and revisit them or hear somebody else revisit them. The, the phrase namaste, that's a very meaningful phrase. The God in me salutes the God in you. The light in me sees the light in you. Namaste is powerful and it's around for such a long time for a reason. Many time, times when we're wanting to thank someone or say goodbye to someone or to say, um, you know, this is the end of my talk or this is, you know, the beginning of a new adventure, the hands together, the namaste, the bowing to each other, I believe, I see it in a little bit different way, which is I see the light in you. The light in me recognizes that light in you. We are the light of the world. We are the light of the world. Let your light so shine, as opposed to let your light, si your light shine. Let it so shine. We are told to let our light shine, and if it does, we don't need to tell anybody. Lighthouses don't fire cannons to call attention to their shining. They just shine. I've never once seen someone like Betty, and I'll quit doing this to you, I, I, I swear, <laughs> walk in with symbols and go, I'm here, I'm shining, everybody check me out, I'm here to make it better, yeah, better dig me. <laughs> now, I'd sort of love it if she did that, but, <laughs> but no, instead, someone like Betty or someone in our life does it naturally. They don't go around announcing it. Well, today I'm going to amp up my shine because I've got a whole lot more I want to do and I sure want to influence y'all. So I'm going to buckle up and be bright. We just allow it. Now, this is, this is fun to think about. Ram Dass, when he was on the planet, had a lot of fun things to say. He says, treat everyone like you meet like God in drag. 
Drag usually means putting on the appearance of a gender, but in this case it means putting on the appearance of identity in all its dimensions. That's what God does, he says. For sake of itself, pure loving consciousness divides itself into many and puts on flesh and a belief system and calls itself human. The illusions are very convincing, so we all tend to forget that we are sparks of loving consciousness. That makes us feel separate from each other when we forget this. Having lost connections to connection to conscious love, that's when we hurt each other. So if you need to pretend and act as if you're putting on that God divinity and that light, fake it till you make it. Get out your drag, baby. Put it on. You have that inside you, and so does everybody else on this planet. That can sometimes be hard to believe. To see the light in a person who, can't not, who cannot yet see it in themselves. We don't know the bigger picture. We don't know when and if that light will come on within them so they can recognize it, so they can treat themselves better, so they can treat others better. But we can. We can hold the high watch. I also like to say we can hold that bright light. We have it right here. If I imagine in my mind that I have this light right here and it comes from within me and I can hold that in their stead whether they ever recognize it or feel it or not. So some things that we can do to help us understand in a deeper, different way what we have within us and what we can see with others to have an idea of what our future path can be like. What is possible? We can quiet the mind. I was just talking this morning about with David Mosher when we had, um, when he would lead a meditation on Wednesdays at 630 and what he didn't know was at that time in my life was very, very challenging. And I, was, I felt like I was walking through a, a dark room with no window. But I was drawn to be here every Wednesday that I was in town, and I was gone a lot at that time. I, would, I said, if nothing else, I'm going to plant myself in this room during that meditation. And I did that, and it helped me quiet my mind, and that's not always an easy thing to do. In fact, sometimes, you know, he would be talking, you have a perfect voice for this, I tell you, if you have any recordings of you doing this, I'm in. Um, and there would be music, and there would be others, and we didn't have to socialize, we could just come sit and quiet our minds. That, sometimes, it took me a while to not go over my grocery list or, th or think about what I needed to do or what had just happened a day before that had me tied up in knots. But once I got there, even just for a few moments, it was so healing and important that eventually that light that I knew was there, I could start to feel it again. And another big one in my top ten is practice gratitude. Practice it. Don't talk about it. Say it to yourself. What am I grateful for right now? What am I grateful for? I'm grateful to have a bottle of water when I need it. There are people around the world that don't. I'm grateful to be able to stand up in a healthy way and be able to have a voice to speak with. I'm grateful to be with this community, both in person and online. I'm so grateful for that. What are you grateful for? Another question I like to ask myself is, what would you do if you could really let yourself do it? How would your light shine then? There have been times in, in our lives, in my life, when I've kind of held back a little bit. I'm too loud. I'm too much. I'm not enough. I'm not this. I'm that. But I had something inside me that wanted to come out. Now, what happened or what might happen to the, our collective future if we all allowed that? If you really let yourself do that. 
How would your light shine then? Even just for a minute. When we allow ourselves to fully embrace our own light, it encourages others to do the same, and boy, is that the truth. I've had so many examples of that in my life. Marianne Williamson says, As we let our light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence, and I want to, I want to make sure I make this point, our presence liberates others. You have the power for this. You have this light inside of you. If not now, when? If not us, who? What is our future? What can we do for ourselves and others that inspires the light to not only be present, but to get brighter? So as we get ready to go into meditation, why don't you take a nice deep breath? Get comfortable in your seat or wherever you are at home. And listen to this music before we go into meditation.
we are ready. We slowly and gently come back to this present moment. is always present with us at all times. And we open our eyes. And we remember we are light. We are Thank you so much, Kelly. And as our ushers come forward for our time of thanks, I invite you to join me as we hold our gifts to our community in our hands and love in our hearts. Let's affirm together, divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And so it is. And as the love offering is collected, let's join Holly in singing, I am as God created me. And remember that you can do either part of this song at the same time. I am as God created me in the light, in the love, in the glory. In the light of the love and the glory, in the light of the love and the 
glory, in the light, in the love, in the glory, I am. Choose your part. As our ushers are here, hear our prayer of thanks. Please listen. We are grateful and we bless the flow of good that supports our unity community. We stand in the knowing that the flow of good goes forth only to return again and again. And so it is. Amen. And now for our opportunities. You may have seen that we have the lovely November bulletin out. Thank you so much, Kathy, for all of your work on this. Take a bulletin. We've also got the daily word for November and December as well out there. And of course, a special welcome to all of our guests today. Thank you so much for joining us. And if you would like more information about Unity of Lawrence or the Unity Movement, please pick up a welcome packet in the foyer. The Sunday Lunch Bunch is meeting today at Jade Garden, 1410 Castle Drive. Everyone is welcome. And after Lunch Bunch, you can come back here uh, for Evolution Sacred Sound Lab, which will be meeting at one, th yes, yes. You wanna channel that amazing musical, creative energy of divine love, just come back 1.30 here in the sanctuary, bring an instrument or just come and listen. Again, everyone is invited. Today is our last Sunday to donate to uh, Just Food. I, we need to give ourselves a hand because the bucket is overflowing <laughs> out there. Abundance in action. Uh, you can also go to their website to donate directly. Um, and do keep in mind for the future, it was brought to my attention, um, to, to also keep in mind alternative foods for those who have allergies. So gluten-free, dairy-free, um, nut-free products. Uh, so please keep that in mind for the future as well. And, and today, if you'd like to, to get a donation in. Also remember that we have open meditations every 6.30 Everyone is welcome. The men and those who identify as male fellowship group gathers on Thursdays at 7 p.m. Uh, please join if that resonates for you. Our choir practice will begin again next Monday. So you, you've got this week off, but following Monday, uh, November 4th at 620. Uh, everyone is invited to join in on the fun. And finally, join us next Sunday when uh, our board president, Cindy Smarsh, brings us the message, Showing Up as Love, with special music with Stephanie Bland. Yes, get some more. Continue this energy. So, And now it's time to rise as you are able to sing the peace song. Mm -hmm. 